Well, I have to say I'm impressed. When I first heard that Indian was going to be releasing a new scout, I expected something like the Rogue release. Basically the same scout with some cosmetic differences. But nothing could be further from the truth. This new family of Indian scouts is completely new. New frame, new more powerful engine, new electronics, and five different styles depending on what the rider is looking for. For all the details and analysis, stay tuned. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you're enjoying the content, please help the channel out by liking the video and sharing it with friends. When Indian first released its modern scout in 2015, it was very well received indeed. It was universally lauded as being superior to the evil powered Harley Sportster of the time in performance and comfort, although in terms of styling it was debatable which bike looked better. Fast forward 9 years and Harley has upgraded the performance of its Sportsters by following Indian down the liquid cooled path and downgraded the looks of them. So by now the scouts were still desirable motorcycles but getting a bit long in the tooth. Enter the new models which replace the old 1133cc Scouts. By the way, the Scout 60 models in Scout, Bobber and Rogue are still listed for sale on the Canadian website, but are not part of this upgrade yet. In the larger Scouts, however, we now have the new Bobber, Sport, Classic, Super Scout and 101 Scout, and they look pretty awesome. These five models all sport the new frame and motor, both of which are an improvement over the outgoing models. The motor is bigger, 1250cc versus the 1133 of the previous models. Horsepower is up from 100 to 105 in every model but the 101, which has an impressive 111 horses. Torque is 14% up on all models, going from 72 pound-feet to 82. That's a ton of torque. These models are also about 10 pounds lighter than the previous ones, with the lightest being the Scout Bobber at 540 pounds wet and the heaviest being the Super Scout with his bags and windshield, which weighs 587 pounds. The weight also takes into account the slightly bigger 3.4 gallon or 12.9 liter tank and a new 2 into 1 exhaust with some nice routing around the clutch cover. All of the new bikes come with forward controls with an option to change to mids for riders who would prefer those. With the 2015 Scout, Indian signaled that they were embracing modernity with an aluminum frame, but apparently the engineers reconsidered and gave the new Scouts a more traditional steel tube frame, which now hides a much smaller radiator in the front. I always thought that Triumph was the best retro bike company at minimizing the look of its radiators, but with these new Scouts, Indian has equaled the British company in this regard and surpassed Harley-Davidson, which puts enormous rads on the front of its Sportsters. Those look like they belong in a V8. The engine has rider modes on some models, rain, standard and sport, more on those later. The Scouts have the lowest seats in the game with most of them sitting at just 25.7 inches off the ground and the bobber with its shortened suspension at just 25.6. There are five models, the stripped down bobber, the sport scout which is basically the current version of the rogue club style bike with its 19 inch front wheel, the Scout Classic with its laced wheels and deep fenders, the light touring Super Scout which, like its bigger cousin the Super Chief, sports a windshield and smallish bags, and the top of the line 101 Scout which superficially resembles the Sports Scout but has better suspension with inverted forks and dual disc Brembo brakes, and also the hot rodded engine. Now for the Bobber, Sports Scout and Scout Classic you have a choice of three trims. The base trim is called standard and these bikes come with LED lights, analog displays and ABS. The limited trim adds cruise control, three rider modes, traction control and USB charging. Finally, the limited plus tech package adds a digital round TFT, phone connectivity and keyless operation. Higher trim levels also offer more color choices. The more expensive Super Scout and 101 Scout are only available in the limited plus tech trim. Speaking of expensive, the prices are up a bit from previous models. The base bobber costs 13k US and 17,800 Canadian. The base sports scout is up to 13.5k US and 18.5 Canadian. The base scout classic will run you 14k US and 19.2 Canadian. If you want the limited or limited plus tech trims along with extra colors, you may pay a lot more. The Super Scout starts at 16,500 US or 22.6 Canadian and the 101 is the priciest at 17k US and 23.3 Canadian. 
So the prices are up slightly on the base models, but if you want the top of the line stuff, you'll pay a pretty penny. Thankfully, Indian has not discontinued the Scout 60 line yet, and I hope they don't as it gives folks a less expensive entry point into the brand. The 60s significantly undercut the Nightster, Harley's least expensive model, although they are also less powerful and less techy. More importantly, the 101 Scout tops out at the same price as the performance-based Sportster S, and this should be an interesting battle. The Sportster S is still lighter and more powerful, but the look of the 101 will appeal to more traditional riders. Based on the launch video, the new Scouts are plenty sporty with ample ground clearance for cornering. Speaking of looks, this is where the Scouts have the biggest advantage over the Sportsters. They generally look cleaner, with cables and hoses better hidden despite being liquid-cooled like the Sporties. The left side of the Nightster is a mess, and styling is generally where current entry-level Harleys fall behind. The Scout's smaller radiators are a definite improvement over the outgoing models, as is the new steel frame. The lines of the bikes have been preserved with very nicely shaped tanks that tie in with the frame and rear shock to provide continuity. And I know that opinions will be divided on this, but the routing of the new 2 into one exhaust looks a bit better than the previous dual unit. Not that it matters, as the exhaust is the first thing most owners will replace. Are there any negatives in the looks department? I could only think of one, and that's the engine. The old mill had that raw industrial look where this one looks a bit cleaner but more plain. This is a subjective thing, but the old engine looked better to me. So the final verdict? I like that Indian has updated the Scout. Free market competition always benefits the consumer. The prices are getting a bit steep, but that's everywhere, and I'm glad that Indian gives you the choice of less expensive base models and still sells the 60s. Look for those to be similarly updated soon, but be stripped down like the base models on the 1250s. Harley has been busy with major updates to its lineup and that has seemed to light a fire under Indian as well. Next, I hope for updated versions of the Springfield and Chieftain, as those bikes are getting a little long in the tooth. I do however hope that Indian doesn't go the Harley route and cut all the less expensive models. They should definitely continue the 111 Thunderstroke engine alongside the 116. Indian is suddenly the less expensive brand, especially when you take dealer markups into consideration. This is good for attracting new riders. So I welcome the new scouts as they once again leap ahead of the sportsters, not in performance this time, but in looks and style. After all, that's what cruisers are all about. And the performance gains are significant too. If you were, or maybe you are, a young rider today looking for an entry-level American cruiser, which would you go for and why? I always like to gauge the public reaction to these things, so please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd buy a base Scout Classic myself, the best combo of style and value in my opinion. But what's your opinion? I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, ride safe, and may the spokes be with you.